Hi, I'm Sean from the Sci-Fi Model Guy, and welcome to our corner of the universe. If you happen to like the upcoming video, please consider hitting that like button. And if you really like the video and others like it, please consider subscribing. It would really help the channel out, and we very much appreciate it. Thank you very much, and happy modeling. Hey guys, Sean back from the Sci-Fi Model Guy, and welcome to a little two-part series that I've put together here for the USS Enterprise NX-01 build. Now this is a one to 1,000 scale model build by Polar Lights, and it's about uh, the size of my hand here, about five, six inches in diameter. And so we're gonna be doing some simple lighting. And I've chosen to do this one here before I jump into the Jupiter II, which is a big 18 inch build. And it's gonna require quite a bit of work and education on my part to, to get that one right. So I wanted to get this one in and it's a lot more geared for beginners. So if you are uh, wanting to start lighting a kit and haven't really decided to jump into it, this is a really good one to start with. Uh, even though it is a small model and it's cramped, um, there is enough room for, for you to do some good work. So there's no nav board on this. It's just strictly lights. And we're going to be able to power this with a 9-volt battery. So I'll we'll be showing you that as well. Um, so again, a little two-part series. Uh, this is part one, obviously. And uh, there's a lot packed in here, everybody. So uh, we're going through this pretty at a, at a good clip. And uh, hopefully uh, you enjoy it. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the little uh, intro there. And we'll see you down the road. Happy modeling. All right, guys, welcome to the first video, first segment of the new build series. We're going to be building the Enterprise NX-01 here from Polar Lights. Uh, this is a small model, uh, and I decided to go with this one because the last two that we did were, were pretty intricate, especially the Enterprise C. So I wanted to kind of take a step back and just do a simpler model. Um, and a lot of that's because we do have quite a few beginners uh, from what I can see in the comments for people that are, are either thinking about lighting a kit or just starting out. So I thought it might be a good idea. Let's go with something simple that doesn't need uh, too much going on that you can get by with uh, limited supplies and uh, budget. So uh, great, it's a great kit here. I, I do have one. Um, I'll pull that one down right now that we can see. And this is uh, what she looks like from when I did it before. Now, this was an older kit. I didn't put the uh, decals on too well but I did light it and uh, it does light up pretty nicely so um, more on that later I don't want to reveal too much and I'm going to do some things on this one that are, are quite a bit different and hopefully a little bit of an improvement on that last one so uh, yes the NX-01 it's a 1 to 1000 scale model and it's a few inches long so let's go ahead and unbox this sucker and these are readily, avail readily available right now you can order them online through Amazon, you can you can get them at hobby shops, uh, and uh, they're still available. So uh, trying to keep that in mind here through these build series until we run out. Oh, it'd be nice to run out of new kits to build, but hopefully they'll always be a fresh supply. But um, I do have some older kits that I'm uh, that I have in store. I'd like to build and do series on them, but some of them are older. They're out of production. Um, I even have one that's like 25 years old. It's a, a Cylon Raider, uh, from like a 30th anniversary Battlestar Galactica, uh, model. And I'd love to build that online, but, um, we'll see. So I'm just talking as we're unboxing this thing. So, Starting off here, we've got, it's this, oh, by the way, it's a snap together kit, everybody. So uh, that's another reason I chose this one. It's very simple to put together. So um, just, I'm gonna pause opening stuff right now and just talk a little bit about here. So we've got basically two main sections, uh, top and bottom of the main ship. Actually, it's both hulls. The ship doesn't really have a secondary hull. Uh, it has an optional one, I, I take that back. There is an optional uh, build in this kit to do the refit which where it adds like a, a secondary hull that looks like the constitution class but i'm not going to build that we're going uh, original from the series and um yeah it's it's very small as you can see so it's going to be a very limited amount of lights that we put in here we're not going to put a navigation board uh it, there's just not enough room in there to do that and um and and everything so uh two main sections of the ship here these are the chiller grills for the nacelles, uh, also pretty small. Um, and then the other one that we had opened while I was talking, it just gives the end caps for the nacelles, 
uh, the optional navigation uh, dish for the refit. Uh, and I think these are the impulse engines, I believe, and a couple other little little thing. I think they're lights or uh, windows or something like that. With the, it's been a while since I built this one. So I have to go back and look at the instructions. So uh, it's a nice little uh, standard display right here that, of course, we'll have to uh, drill out and make a hole for the... Oh, there's some nice little piece hanging off there. We'll have to drill a hole for the switch. And then there's the stand here, which, of course, we're going to have to use a uh, replacement because this is a solid piece of metal and I can't get a wire down there. But we'll save that anyway. You never know. So I'm going to put this away and we'll take out these other bits of packaging here and unbox them and talk about what we find. So here's some more sprues. And I'm waiting to get to the, uh, here we are, it's the engines, the warp nacelles, I believe, are on here. So, uh, yeah, these are them, and um, they're very, they're very small. So, we're going to have to get the lights in there. Now, on the other kit I did, I was able to fit the regular lighting in there, but I'm thinking of trying to use my nippers and cut the lights down a little bit to get it to work. I don't know if it will work yet. We'll see. I did test it uh, on a, a little spare strip, but we'll have to um, do that, talk about it later. So here's some other um, little bits. Here's, I think this is the, the deflector dish, very skinny little thing. I think this is an optional one. I forget what these bits are for. Uh, these are like the outside of the chiller grills. They go on there. Like on the outside here, here's the other parts of the engine. And various other small pieces. Really has, I think it's been three years, I think, since I built this kit. Maybe two, two and a half. Maybe less, I can't even remember. Okay, um, yeah, this I think is the optional kit. Uh, it gives you the, uh, for the neck the secondary hull option that we have there. And then obviously they, there's the bottom. Um, really cool that they did that and made it available. I personally am just not interested in building that variation of the ship, but I do uh, I do think it's cool that Polar Lights included that as an option uh, for people who want to expand their collection and do something a little different. So, um, yeah, these uh, chiller grills, obviously, we're going to paint with the with the clear blue like we did in the Enterprise-C. And uh, we'll figure out some cool solutions for the ends of the warp nacelles. Uh, I don't know what this is. I think this is for the display. We'll hold on to that. Get rid of some trash here. And the decals. So I think this kit comes with an optional water slide and stickers. No, I'm wrong. I thought that was a sticker. So yeah, these are all water slide. Uh, the cool thing is they do give you the optional decals for the uh, Mirror Universe Enterprise, um, which is there. So you've got the ISS Avenger and ISS Enterprise. Um, and then you can also build uh, the Columbia, which is the NX-02. Uh, so if you wanted to build like your, a little fleet, or um, or just the NX-01. We're going with the NX-01. Um, we're just sticking with the Enterprise theme on this channel for now. There's so many variations. I've got an Enterprise E as well that needs building. So we're going to put this away. And then uh, just give a quick talk about oh, paint. Sorry, I didn't mean to put that, that hull away. So the paint that we're going to be doing here, um, I'm going to go, because on, on the show it was very much metallic. Um, uh, it was a very shiny kind of metallic look that they went with. So I'm going to try to duplicate that. And I've got some ideas on that. So um, I've chosen to go with, uh, I have a light, uh, this is a light gunmetal TS-42 from Tamiya. And that's going to be kind of a base coat. 
So uh, the first thing obviously we're gonna do is prime it um, with black to get the light blocking down that we need um, just in case, because I don't remember how thin or thick this plastic is, but we're gonna prime it black. Then I'm gonna do a base coat of this um, light gun metal. And this is a very, re it's a reflective dark gray. And that'll add like some nice undertones for the, for the color. Then I'm gonna top it off with here. This is just bare metal silver. And I'm just gonna hit that on the top there with that, um, that color. Then what I'm going to try to do, and now I don't know if this is going to work or not, but uh, if it doesn't, we can just kind of cover it up with more paint, um, is I've got here this uh, dark copper. And what I'm gonna do with this, once I get the paint on here and before it gets too dry and before it cures all the way, uh, what I'm going to do is hit hit the model with a light coat from of this dark copper with the airbrush. Now I might even do that uh, gunmetal gray copper and then top it with the silver kind of not thickly and light, but I just kind of want to get some ideas of the copper tones underneath there as well as the gunmetal. So we're going to see how that works. Um, I have seen a couple of the builds that kind of did it this way and it kind of gives it a pearlescent type of a look that the, depending on the angle that you're looking at the ship from, uh, it reflects the different colors. Um, I know a Boyd over at Trekworks did a 350 version of of this kit and he did something similar. So I'm gonna try to duplicate that. I don't know how it's going to work out, especially with such a small kit, um, but we'll find out. For the insides, of course, we're going to light block it with black like we have before and then hit it with a, uh, with a white, uh, a, a reflective white to bounce the light around. So um, we're gonna be doing that. Now, I may decide on the inside to do it with a silver on the interior just to get the light to reflect a little bit more. Uh, and that's just from experience on the other model that I did. You don't have much room in here for too many lights. So we kind of need maximum effect to get the light bouncing around. Now with a big saucer and open one like the Enterprise uh, from the TOS or from the Enterprise C, um, we could get away with the white, but we may end up doing the reflective silver in here. Haven't quite decided on it yet, but I do have a can of that on standby. Now, the last bit of this unboxing I just want to talk about, or the intro to this kit, is this cool Aztec decals that I bought for this. Uh, it's got all the paneling on here, and that's really cool. And I think a lot of these might replace some of the decals that it comes with. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't even opened it yet. So um, let's go ahead and slice it open. Why don't we get the exacto knife? And just cut her open and we'll see what's inside. Now this um, decal sheet was about as much as the model. So if you're going to do this kit and you're on a budget, you may want to avoid doing the Aztec decals uh, if you're on if you're again if you're on the budget um, but look at this nice instructions here there's quite a number of decals to go on here they're nicely protected here with this uh, nice film sheet here so you can see here very very well printed very highly detailed um, I'm gonna bring it up here see if you can Take a look at that. Super thin lines. Very nicely done. Looks like it was uh, worth every penny here. Of course, the final judgment will be what do they look like on the model? I have no reason to think they won't be excellent. So here's some more and a third sheet there. So top bottom of the saucer and then the other areas of the ship. So we have one to three sheets of decals with top bottom instructions as well as the oh oh that's for the refit if you choose to do the refit um, instructions on decal application and uh, 
there's a note here apply marking decals included in the model kit after okay so these go first and then you put on the uh supplied ones that came with the kit of course so all right so i am going to carefully put these back in the sleeve i want them to remain in good shape okay all right everybody so yeah that's the uh, a little bit of an unboxing there um we're gonna be doing the other work uh, coming up is of course just prepping the model i'm going to be uh you know scuffing it up like that and then giving it a nice bath and some warm um water with some dish soap to get the grease off uh clean up any flash that we might have and then we'll get to work so i'm anticipating this is going to be a two or three video series um again just stepping back in the complexity department for for a video here and then we're going to get into something more intricate after this build this one won't take too long to do so that is it for this section i'm going to pack up the model for now and then we'll get back to the painting priming and getting all that ready for you so stick around folks and we'll see you in the next segment if i can get the cover of the box on there we go okay all right everybody see you in a second hey guys so i'm getting ready to go over to the paint station and start priming this this model up a little bit and i wanted to talk a little bit about prepping the model to receive the paint now if you have seen other videos in this channel what i've previously done is i have gone ahead and used this uh what's called double ot steel wool to go ahead and prepare the surface to scrub it down scuff up the paint or scuff up the plastic a little bit sorry to get ready to receive the paint and that that scrubbing it like this it helps a couple things it one it removes any oil or grease or things that were left from from the molding process or the creation of the model and secondly uh slightly roughing up the the plastic gives the paint more places to kind of stick on at least for the primer and and it just it's a good kind of a good practice that, that i found out so the problem with this steel wool even though it works really well is that it leaves little bits of metal behind it leaves it on the towel it leaves it on the model it can leave it into your skin and be uncomfortable and kind of poke in there and there was a a, a nice viewer and i believe this was on the first video for the channel for the enterprise 650 scale who suggested using a Brillo pad or something similar, like a, a, the scrubby brushes, um, which was a good idea. And then I thought, you know, I have something in the garage that would do it. And it's this neat little item I picked up at the hardware store at Lowe's called Roto Scrub. And it fits to any drill. Um, so I'm going to take off one thing I have here. And this is the piece. It's, uh, it's just like a little piece of plastic with some Velcro on it. And it comes with these nice uh, nylon, I think it is, briller pads. And it's meant for scrubbing tubs. And you can scrub your boat and stuff. And it's really nice for removing dirt. So I thought, what if I tried using that, this item to remove uh, the, the, you know, to, not the remove, I'm sorry, to scuff up and prepare my models for painting. So um, what I'm doing here, I'm going to place this item as much in the center as I can so when it turns around it won't look weird it'll be easier to control and I and I did do this already so um, of course tested it out so you just plug it in here and you can put it on low speed and all you got to do is just make sure you don't press down like you're gonna break you don't want to break your model um, but you can you can hold it in one hand like this and just be careful and lightly go over your model. You can go light. And if, I don't know if you can see, I'll hold it up to the camera. You can see it's not super reflective. And I can tell there's there's scuffing in here. And it, to me, this is enough. I can see the lines in there. And this is great. I'm not getting any, any fall off of this. There's no little pieces of metal hanging around. 
and then and I can you know adjust the angle of this thing and the pressure to get it where I need to. Um, I'm going to be careful here on the side to not break it. This is delicate, so I'm going to support it from back here and do the same on this side. And there we go. So really nice. I really, I, I'm glad I kind of thought of this and I wanted to share it with you. Uh, I think, and when I build the bigger ships, it'll be more apparent as to the effect we're having on it. But yeah, uh, low speed on the drill and just real careful and it worked just right. So hopefully that's a good tip for everyone if you haven't already thought of it yourselves. And uh, see you in a second. We'll go over and start painting the, the uh, primer for it. See you soon. Hey guys, so uh, before I go over there and do the priming on this model kit, uh, one of the things we do have to do to make sure is if you're gonna light this and do the windows, we have to make sure to uh, drill them out. The uh, previous method that I used for the uh, TOS Enterprise, the 650 scale, and the, um, the last one, the 1400 of the Enterprise C, we use the scrape out method basically where you know where you paint it and then where the windows are, you just scrape the paint off and the light is able to shine through the plastic. And uh, to be certain, this, this kit does have, you know, it would allow that. I've got this, this battery, uh, flashlight's running out of juice, but you can see the light coming through there. But these windows, this kit is so small and the windows are so small, um, I, you gotta drill them out, is, is in my opinion. So it's very hard to scrape them out. The windows are very pinhole. And so uh, drilling is going to be preferred here. So um, I haven't shown this on camera before. Usually what I do is I use the, the old Dremel and I'll put a small drill bit in there. Um, but if you don't have a Dremel, uh, they can be expensive. I do want to go over this, and this is a great opportunity to show off this tool. And this is a pin vise, and you can order them from Amazon. They're pretty inexpensive, and they come with a variety of, the, sometimes they come with a variety of drill bits, or you can order them like these. And these are very, very small drill bits. And you just put them in here, and the vise, it unscrews like a normal drill bit. You put it in and close it. And you do it by hand. So I'm going to demonstrate that here for you. Let me zoom in. Uh, zoom in on a good part of the ship here. Let me find out where. Okay, we'll start here on the this part of the saucer section. So you can see these little tiny, tiny holes there. So let me make sure that I'm in camera. There we go. And you just you just twist it to the right. So uh, it's just like any drill, I'm going to find the hole there, and I'm just going to start turning. You don't have to press very hard at all. The drill will do the work for you, and one of the advantages of this, obviously, is control. So you, can, you don't have to worry about a high-speed drill wobbling around and drilling in the wrong spot. You can have very accurate control with this. And the second advantage is you can go very slow so you don't have to worry about melting the plastic, warping it, or getting melted plastic on your drill bit. So there you go. I, I punched through. And again, I was very light and I'm just twisting it left the opposite way to get out. And there we go. Let me stand up here so I can make sure... There's our first window. So we're gonna get the light test here. And there we go. Comes through real nice. And if I wanted to, I could even take some solar res on the other side of that to, uh, to fill it in. I don't think I'm going to. Um, I'm gonna do one more here. find it and on this kit you guys I am going to I'm going to drill out all the windows on this ship um, you know not like the Enterprise D or the Enterprise C where there's just so many windows 
uh, you don't want to do them all. The NX01 has very few. So I want I want them all to be on on this on this one. Not only that, but it would be kind of difficult to make any of them uh, blacked out. So sorry if my hand's in the way. I'm just holding it with my left hand and to, to steady it and using my right hand to turn it. And I feel like I'm getting a little bit more control and going straight down. So it's going through. There it goes. Again, very no, very little to no pressure. And there we are. We've got two really nice round holes. So yeah, it's a lot slower method than the Dremel tool, but it's uh, a lot more controllable. And if you have a lot of time on your hands or a small kit, this is definitely the way to go. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these up. And then also I might try to do a few here on the these uh, ring section that goes in between the two uh, bits of the saucer. Uh, there are some windows in there that I don't think I drilled out last time. I may not do all of these, but uh, we'll see. They're kind of a funny angle, so we'll have to, uh, have to figure that out. And I'll come back and we'll talk about that when it's done. So yeah, uh, cool little technique here, you guys. If you don't have the money for a Dremel, definitely uh, you might want to invest in a pin vise. And they can do wonders, and they're a good tool. All right, see you soon. Hey everybody, so I just wanted to record another session here on the window drilling before I go and light, start light blocking the interior of the saucer section. Um, these pieces here are the sides of the saucer. These kind of go in between the gap between the top and the bottom. And there are some windows in here. And I think I did talk about whether or not I was going to drill them through and I did just go ahead and decide just to, to do them and I wanted to demonstrate that a little bit here just uh, real quickly so to do to drill these sides of the windows here all I'm doing is taking my my hands like this finger holding holding it down finding the window and just turning to the right you know just drilling in it's very thin plastic it's very soft this part as well and it went right through with no problem and uh, here's the the holes came through pretty nice. So in regard to the drilling of the holes, so one thing I wanted to point out is that when you finish drilling these things, you get a lot of plastic flash coming through on the other side. And when you run your finger over, you can really feel it. It almost feels like Braille. Um, and you and you want to you know, get rid of this as much as possible. So you can do that a few ways. Um, you can take a sanding stick, sanding nail. I'm going with a file. And all I'm doing is just going over these areas and just kind of kind of pushing it out of the way. And a lot of the stuff is just falling right off. And I'm not necessarily sanding it off. I'm kind of pushing it off first, kind of like a shovel action. And then I'll go back over and sand it a little or with the file and file it down. So that, that's a kind of a small step, but it is important to get as much of this off as you can because the, even though these little bits of plastic coming through are very small, they are going to want to block the light coming through. We don't have a lot of room in here for lighting, so uh, which we'll, we'll go over in another section. I've, I have a scheme of how I'm gonna lay it out. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to point out that it really is important to get, to get this stuff off of there. And then when you're done with that, you're going to want to come back through with your, your pin vise and, and just re kind of re-drill these holes back in there. Not, not, it's not going to take forever, of course, because you've already got the hole there, but you want to get this in there to clear each window out because the filing and sanding will have deposited the plastic back into the holes and you're going to want to clear that out. Uh, another thing you might want to do is consider a uh, air can. When, when you're all done and uh, just go just go through like this and I'm not sure if any's coming out but if you have a can of air handy it wouldn't hurt and it would also get the little bits off of, of the inside here as well so there it is folks that's it and then that is 
the last aside I have before I uh, light block this. So I'm going to take it over there. I'm going to light block the inside of this. I'm going to light block the nacelles as well. And I'm going to be taking care, because remember, this is a snap kit. Um, when we're done, that we might want to make sure to scrape off the paint of these pegs here because that's how it's going to snap together these things fit really snugly so even a layer of paint on here will affect the uh the overall uh, snugness of there i might even go so far as take a um a cotton bud let's give this a shot here while i'm thinking of it and i can take these and i can break them off and what i'll do is i'll just stick them in there like that and that will keep paint from getting into into the uh holes on the receiving ends of these things. It's actually kind of cool. <laughs> I thought of that just uh, as we're talking here. So this is uh, this is gonna work out good. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that while we're, while we're talking about it, while I'm thinking. Yeah. And then the paint that gets on these pegs, I can just scrape off pretty easily with the X-Acto knife. Let's give this a quick cut. And then, um, oh, uh, while well, I'm thinking about it also, so when you're drilling these holes, so the, the, the saucer section was very easy to drill the holes because I was going down and the, the back uh, here where the nacelles come out was poking up. The inside, however, if you look, it was facing uh, downward and you're drilling this way. So I was being very careful not to drill because if you look here i'm springing this i didn't want to break this part or warp it so what i did was i grabbed a roll of tape i set that down and put the saucer section on top of that and then i was able to uh, hold it down and apply a lot of good pressure down to get these drilling drill uh vice in there or the pin vice in there and i didn't have to worry about warping or breaking the back here so if you're going to drill the holes out on the model make sure for the bottom section you give some support to it a roll of tape just worked out perfect and it was a little bit worry free for that section so yeah um that's pretty cool and this you know what actually this is also doubling as a good kind of a stand for the model i'm sure i'm not the first person to figure this out when painting another model, I'm gonna maybe even employ employ this ta technique on other kits. It'll allow me to really paint the edges of something and not have to worry about where it's touching a, um, a surface. You know, like paint painting on my painting surface and worry about paint sticking. So I can kind of elevate it off the ground a little bit. That's pretty cool. I like that. Learn something every day. The um, this section here, maybe I can get them in. There's a couple of pad, uh, tabs in here. There's one back here, but I don't know if it's going to fit. I'm using the other end, not the cotton part, but the but the uh, sticky part here. No, that's not quite working. But you know what? I might be able to cut a toothpick and put that in there. So. We'll give that a shot. All right, folks, uh, it's enough of me rambling. Uh, but yeah, cool cool little segment here. We learned something. And uh, we'll see you in the next segment. And hopefully that will be uh, primed, ready to go with the light blocking. And then we'll lay down the lighting. Okay, see you soon. Hey, guys, just a few more notes here before I go over and start light blocking from the inside here. And I know I've, I've come back a couple of times here on this, but uh, I've been discovering a couple of things here as I go, um, things that I'm learning and things that I'm remembering. So before I go over there, I wanted to talk a little bit about this now. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and installed the side pieces here that we had talked about earlier on on uh, where I was drilling those those side ports, the windows. And those can be found, if you're building along with me here, uh, on page one, it's just these these little bits that here that go on the side on the bottom part of the saucer section. 
I've gone ahead and just installed them now because I wanted to make sure I can get them in and not have to worry about uh, the paint building up and not getting a tight fit on there. And um, I'm glad I, I thought of that because it would have been kind of difficult to snap these things on. Um, the other thing I do want to just let you know, I did end up gluing a few of these pieces on, even though this is a snap together kit, it's, it's always good to keep some glue on hand and for certain parts that may not fit really well or things that you just want to secure uh, a little bit more than what the snap kit kit does on its own. So um, it, it's not uh, cheating. It's not anything like that. It's just giving some extra stability on there. And especially since we're going to be lighting this kit, uh, it's good in some cases you may want to decide to use some glue to really lock something down to prevent any light leaks. So um, speaking of light leaks, now on the rear, on the after the ship, there's this little piece, this side piece that goes right here. Um, and I was looking at it and I saw that there was a little bit of a gap there. And I tested it with my flashlight and said there was indeed a light leak coming uh, back here. It was very minor, but I decided, you know what, I've got the thing open now. I'm going to putty it now. So uh, that that's pretty fortunate that I was able to put the putty in on the inside of the ship because that allows me to be a little bit more messy and I don't have to worry about cleanup. I can glob it on there and really make sure that it blocks all of the light and I won't have to worry about that going forward. So there's that. Um, the other thing I do want to point out now, I'm going to stand up. Now on the, sh on the ship, on the inside, there's this little kind of a ridge thing. I guess it's for support for the inside but what i notice is that this little thing rising up is going would be blocking the light coming through these side uh panel uh window ports that we had drilled out so what i ended up doing was uh using the pin vise and i just re-drilled the holes here for the side of the ship now they did end up getting a little bit bigger than before uh, because you know i was drilling twice and i had to um, I had to drill parallel to the ship. So before when I was doing it, I was kind of drilling down uh, at an angle to get the hole in. But then when I put it in, I realized, no, I kind of need to go parallel here if I expect any light to be coming through that window port. So, um, so I, I went ahead and did that and I went straight through until I, I kind of knocked into this little ridge thing. So what I'm going to have to do now is I'm taking my Sharpie here just for illustration uh, and any of these window ports where I have, I'm going to mark them uh, just, so, just so you can see them. And in these, par in these areas where I am marking, I'm going to have to come through and remove this, this little bits of plastic in these areas to allow a gap to have light come through and illuminate these windows um i am going to do that with the dremel uh, but if you don't have one you could probably use your uh your nippers or you can use your exacto knife or a little hobby saw or something like that just to knock out some of these areas i probably wouldn't eliminate all of them because i think they do add some support here for the for the model uh but yeah so for, for the areas that you want the light to come out, you're going to have to knock out some of that to have the light show, shown through. And this will be more apparent when I get the lighting installed on there. So, all right, everyone. I think that's it. I'm pretty sure I've got all of these uh, little holes here plugged with the cotton buds from that little technique I kind of discovered by accident. And I have also have the nacelles uh, on, on the old bamboo skewers with the alligator clips. And again, employing the same technique of putting the cotton buds in these holes here. Um, oh, uh, one other call out. So in prepping these for light blocking, because I'm going to be blocking the inside of these, these nacelles, um, these pieces have these little tiny uh, pieces of plastic in between this gap here. Uh, I guess that's from the molding process or anything and, and of course, we're going to remove these, but I left them in because that gives me something really nice to put my alligator clip on like this so that when I'm painting it, 
it'll have this nice thing to hold on to that I don't have to worry about uh, if it gets painted or not. So once I'm done, I'll take this off and remove it. So it gives me a nice little gripping point. And I did that on all four nacelles they have, uh, of all four sides of the two nacelles. So that was pretty fortunate that those things are there. And I just wanted to call that out in case you are building along with me to uh, go ahead and leave those things in. So, um, yeah, uh, other than that, uh, there's just a few of the pieces here I put on. Um, I followed pretty much all of these pieces here with the exception of the clear ones that are the 100 series on the sprues. And um, I built the bottom thing here. I don't know what this is called, but I assembled this little sub-assembly and put these little tiny pieces on the nacelle struts there. Um, the other clear parts that are, for, I think these are the two impulse engines, they're going to be blue, and there's a clear part here that I haven't put on, so um, that's ready to go as well. It's over by the painting station. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's right here. I, I, I snapped it on. So this part here I put, and again, I'm going to do that black, um, even though there's nothing illuminated in here. Uh, if you recall from the last section, or the last model we did, even for areas that aren't illuminated, uh, you do want to prime everything the same color. So if you're priming the saucer section on the outside black like we're going to, you're going to prime this part black as well, even though you're not um, illuminating in that. That way you get a nice consistent shade of colors through the painting. All right, everyone, I have talked far too much on this section, but I thought these were some important points to make, especially if you're building along with me. And we will be back in the next segment uh, doing the lighting and getting ready for that. See you soon. Everybody, okay, so the painting of the interior is done and I've gone ahead and prepped some of the interior for the, uh, for the lighting. But I did wanna talk a little bit about the color choice of the inside. Now I know in the last segment or two, I did mention that I had decided to go with a silver paint on the inside for the reflectivity, but I did do some research on the old internet and it turns out that white paint is actually more reflective overall than silver paint. So um, what I, I kind of understand from it is the white paint gives a higher uh, diffused reflectivity and the shiny uh, reflective silver paint, if, you know, like think of a mirror, is is more a uh, direct reflection so if you think of it this way um the way i kind of came to it was if you look at a building and if, if you have one building on one hand is painted all white and it's a bright sunny day it kind of hurt your eyes to look at that building because it would just it would hurt you now if you had another building that was a mirror it would only hurt your eyes if the sun was reflecting right into your eye so it is more intense on a direct reflection from the sunlight or the, the light source, but overall white is more reflective and diffuses light more evenly and, and at a greater value. So I hope that makes sense. So I think uh, given that little tidbit that I found and thinking of the science of it a little, uh, I am gonna go ahead and just continue to go with a white interior on, on the ship painting when it comes to light reflectivity. Unless of course I needed specific light reflection and uh, then I would just uh, go with the silver. But I think white uh, is overall is going to go uh, with my choice. It's a little cheaper and 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 that's that. So, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the lighting scheme that I've come up with here. So I've decided to go ahead and I'm going to do a ring of lights. This is a very, very small ship. And I wanted to make sure I got some lights coming uh, direct sideways into these side window ports as much as possible. Um, now, even though we do have this little ridge here, which I still have to knock those down with the with the uh, Dremel, um, but I think this will give us a nice, uh, nice diffused light all the way around the ship. Now, uh, the curve of the saucer allows so so the side windows here and here will get some nice illumination with this method, and for the upper windows what I've decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and I still have to cut one of them, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put a, a strip here facing up for, for these windows and for the dome on the top. So we're going to get plenty of, of reflectivity and plenty of light coming out. In fact, I'll just go ahead and cut that extra strip here. 
So I'm gonna just show you, I'm gonna plop that one down right there. And then I've got some other light that's uh, on here. Whoops, <laughs> sorry about that. They're, I haven't, I haven't uh, wired it up, so they're kind of slipping around here. Um, so I've got this light source here because there's some nice windows here that I want to illuminate. And uh, this, this little bit here that does light. And um, back here, there's like some thrusters or something right here on the sides of the ship. And these two lights here will help illuminate those. There are the impulse engines here in the rear of the ship. We're going to light those with two 0805 white um, SMDs here that are going to just, just lay right back here. And there's that. So the other thing that I've done here to prep is I've cut a couple pieces or three pieces of sprue off of the kit. Again, um, you know, when you, when you get these, save these sprues and all you should always have some on hand. Um, so that is going to give me a nice, a nice, uh, kind of, kind of support here to glue this strip around. And it's going to kind of come like this, like a teardrop and, and that will hold it steady. Now the ship is, is small, the kit's small, but it's plenty wide enough to support the overall width of this light strip in the middle, which is the fattest part. Um, as for lighting the engines, I am going to go with uh, two, uh, I'm gonna go with a, the strips inside the nacelles and then two 0805s for the, uh, one, uh, 0805 for the Boussard collectors. Um, now I might decide to trim this light strip down, which I did do a test off camera and it does work. Um, so what you do is I'll just trim a little bit off of the side here and a little bit off of there. And as long as I can remember which is the positive side and which is negative, it should be fine. And that will allow me to put this strip uh, nice and uh, nice and flush inside the nacelles. Now, on the previous ship that I did build, I did not cut these down and they fit in there. Uh, I did have to do quite a bit of squeezing though. And uh, there is a slight bulge on, on that nacelles on my other model you can barely tell but i'm going to just trim these down just a millimeter or two to get a little bit better fit so that's it everyone it's a pretty simple lighting scheme um i might even have more than i need but we're going to go with it um the other thing i might do is i might use some fiber optic cable uh not cable, fiber optic uh, uh light um light wire for these, uh, the side, the nav lights. Now they're not gonna be blinking, but I might um, incorporate some of that down here and just glue it to one of these, uh, one of these light sources and then, and then paint the, the edge of it red and green on the side. So I haven't quite decided if I'm gonna do that yet. Uh, we'll, we'll see, I might just do a lighting test and, and see, I might not have to do too much fancy stuff because again, it's a small model small kit inside so this light's really going to bounce around like crazy in here and and these two lights here might just uh i might be able to get away with some solar res i don't know so we'll, we'll find that out all right guys so uh, i'm going to go ahead now i've got the soldering gun uh all heated up and i'm going to start wiring these things and we'll come back and show you what what the whole layout looks like see you in a minute Hey guys, so I'm at a good stopping point here and I want to talk some about the lighting decisions that I've made on this kit. So in previous models that I've built, I have always done a, a parallel series of lighting where I will have like one main power line going around and I'll connect each lighting section to the main power line. And the benefit of that is that if one of the lighting fixtures fails, only that section will pop out and not light. I don't have a lot of room here, uh, so I had to link these three items here in a series. So if, uh, for instance, uh, this one went, were to go out, the ones connected to it would possibly go out as well. Um, but, you know, given the amount of room, that's just a decision I had to make. And these things rarely fail anyway. And um, so that's the decision that I've, I've gone forward with. Um, okay, so aside from that, we have four sections of three the LED strip, one in the one on the front of the ship and the bow, and then these three here. Um, these these two here on the side, I put in to illuminate these little thrusters here, as well as some of the lights that come on the top of the 
saucer section on the on the, these sides here to give a little extra illumination. And um, this one here is for there's the windows here in the back. Okay, uh, I've got two 0805 SMDs connected to the back here where um, they will illuminate the impulse engines. Um, now this is a little bit loose here, but when we put, oops, excuse me. When we put the uh, the top down, it will it will push this down and that will light up the back. And we'll, we'll demonstrate that in a moment. Um, everything here is connected to, to these uh, sections right here. So these little black um, guys here are the resistors for the 0805 SMDs. And they're a very thick, solid wire, so that adds a real good base to wrap all the other positive wires around. And I have the uh, the other uh, negative wires connected here together. And I've got this wired out here to my uh, power supply. Eventually, I'm going to be drilling a hole right here through there, and that's going to be where the main wires terminate through. Um, the only thing I really have to light now are the nacelles and that's just going to be a simple um 0805 smd in the front for the bizarre collector and then a six series a strip of uh smd for the uh, nacelle itself i might go with three uh, not quite sure yet so uh that's that's going to be pretty simple i'm going to wire those up put them down through here and connect them to this main main wire here um so uh what i want to do i just want to demonstrate really quick the lighting that I've decided to do here and uh, I'm pretty pleased with it that the lighting is coming through the sides of the ship as we had hoped for so I'm going to pop this on real quick so as you can see here this thing is illuminated extremely well um, we don't have tons of lighting in here but the size of the ship and I think we chose correctly with the white paint on the inside that will make the paint, uh, the light bounce around quite a bit. Um, one of the things I'm really happy about is the side windows. And it's kind of hard to see, and maybe you can't, but I've got a couple holes drilled there. And that is coming through on the side as I had hoped. The other nice thing here is these two lights here and these two lights there as well as on the bottom of the ship. It's kind of hard to tell because of the it's sandwiched uh, in a weird way, but that light will be coming through on the bottom. Uh, so I won't need to go ahead and I will not need to use any fiber optics there. I'm just going to put some solar res there and paint them uh, red and green for the port and starboard. And that will be uh, sufficient for this small kit. And uh, that's it, everyone. So the lighting test is a success. Uh, it's nice and illuminated. I have this running at 9 volts right now, and that's going to be plenty. I could probably, you know, I, I'll up it here to 12. Um, it's really not necessary for this, this kit, but if I do it at 12, it really, really, really pops. Um, but I'm going to go with a 9 volt here, and I'm going to turn it down to nine and you can see it's just nice and subtle so there it is everyone um next segment will be probably the nacelles uh wired up and painted and they're over there drying right now and we'll be wrapping up this this kit pretty soon everyone it's a pretty short build but i just wanted to take the opportunity and show you the lighting that i decided on and it is working so if you're going to build this along with me uh, you don't need too much equipment on this, and we can get it done pretty quick. See you soon.